I'm Maimon. Welcome back to another one of my videos in the series of converting our patio to a three season multi purpose room. And in our last few videos, we've been talking about things like putting joist hangers. And I guess I want to remind you guys that these videos about this patio conversion are mostly about, they're mostly kind of like vlogs, but occasionally we use them as ways to inform people who might be working on similar projects. Like if you're converting your patio, to a sunroom, then maybe you can use our videos as a guide. And that's what our videos like using joist hangers, we talked about OSB and plywood, and all those kinds of things. And in the future, when we put the floor, when we put the uh, underlayment, then we can do more informing you guys about those different topics. In this video, actually first off, since we last, uh, since we last left off after the joist hanger video, we did a few things with the sunroom. So first thing, as you can see, all the beams are put in place. Uh, I mean, all the joists are put in place. Uh, we actually have two windows installed, as you can see, two windows. We don't have all six yet because we're trying to make sure that the first two fit before we order the other four. Uh, we added some wood plastic around all the <laughs> beams to make it look nice. Uh, and there's one thing else, but I forgot. But in this video, we're going to be talking about attaching the deck to the structure. In our case, we built a floating deck, so we don't really need to attach our deck to a structure. But since we want to make our videos informative, we figured that some people who are building decks, they're often going to be attaching their decks to houses or to other structures. So in this case, even though it's not required of us, in this video, we're going to be talking about attaching your decks to your structures. All right, so first things first, on this side of the, uh, the deck, we have something called a flush beam, which, because it's not attached to the house, it requires a specific setup, which we'll talk about later in the video, or we'll talk about it in the next video. Uh, on this side, uh, I just want to say, we're not attaching this to a house, technically. We're actually attaching it to this side of the patio, to this uh, block of wood right here, which is called a, a railroad tie. So, might not be a house specifically, but just assume for the purposes of, the, of this video that this is a house, this side. Anyway, let's talk about attaching the deck to the structure. So when you're attaching a deck to the house, usually you're attaching it to the ledger, uh, which is the, the length of wood that you're attaching the deck to. Okay, just, just getting definitions out of the way. And per building code, you need to have a certain type of screw uh, and a certain specifications and dimensions that you attach the screw to. So first off, here is an example of a screw that you would need to oh hold on that you would need to fasten the deck to the ledger. And there are a few different things that they have to uh, regulate. First off, talking about the screw, they talk about the width of the screw. In this case, we have a three eighths inch. They talk about the uh, depth of the screw. Uh, I believe this is four inches. I take that back. This is actually a half inch or. Uh, half inch uh, lag bolt. We'll talk about lag bolts later. That, and a uh, half inch is actually the minimum that's required by uh, building code if you're attaching something to the ledger. Anyway, they specify the depth, they specify the minimum uh, uh, width, and they also specify you have to have something like a washer. Usually when building code inspectors come to see how, uh, inspect the fasteners, they inspect things like uh, what I just said, but they also inspect how the fasteners are placed. So when you place fasteners, they have to have they have to be a cert, a minimum a maximum width apart, and the maximum width is 15 inches apart, which is actually strange because you know joists are placed 16 inches apart. So if you're placing the joists, it can also it can often be a bit of a tricky thing to place your uh, to place your bolts. But anyway. They ask you to place the uh, the screws 15 inches apart at max, so they, they can be uh, eight inches apart, but the max is 15. And they also ask you to place the bolts uh, um, at least two inches from the top or the bottom of the ledger. So just to reiterate, they, they specify things that you need for the screw itself and also how the screw is placed. All right, so if we take a look at our deck here, you can see that we've attached the 
uh, the screws uh, sort of like this. This is an example of the screw that we attached, but also one that looks like this. So I'm going to talk about this type of screw first. This right here is a lag screw. It is the screw that most buildings, most builders have been using for quite a while. And the way to, uh, to fasten this in, I will show you guys on video, it is quite a time consuming process. Uh, and we'll talk more about lag screws and bolts in a bit, but I just wanna show you the alternative that with new technology, they've come up with this right here. This is called a ledger screw or a structural screw. And it looks like this. And this screw right here, the structural or ledger screw, is supposed to replace this screw. And it's supposed to be just as strong and just as convenient to use, or actually more convenient to use, even though it's thinner. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install a lag screw. And I'm also gonna show you how to install a structural screw. And you can see for yourself the difference between them. All right, so let's talk about the lag screw. Now, some people also call this a lag bolt. Uh, I'm gonna be upfront about this. It doesn't really matter to me. If you say it to the cashier, they probably will know what you're talking about. But just talking about the name of it, the official name is a lag screw. And there's been a lot, like a lot of debate about screw versus bolt. And even I have trouble with screws versus bolt. Like people talk about, first off, like the head, if it has a hole inside, it's a screw. If, it, if you turn it on the outside, then it's a bolt. That's something that people say. Another thing that people say is that if it has a nut, then it's a bolt. If it doesn't have a nut, then it's a screw. But what my dad says is that the difference between a screw and a bolt to him is that a bolt has a round end, it's usually flat, while a screw usually has a, uh, a sharp at the end, it's, 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 a, it's a cone. And I guess it, it can be considered self-tapping. And for all intents and purposes, this is called a lag screw, but it doesn't really matter if you call it a lag bolt. In our, in our case, we're gonna call it a lag screw though. But anyway, without further ado, I'm going to show you how to install a lag screw. All right, so we're going to install our lag screw in this section of the patio, since as you can see over here, we already have all of our lag screws installed. Also keep in mind, we don't even have to install these because we're not actually attaching these to the patio, we're just doing this for the video. So we're doing this for you guys. All right. All right, so as you can see, tons of tools that we need for this lag screw job. And you're gonna need all these tools for every every single lag screw that you do. So the first thing that we need is a drill. And, okay, I'm going to put this in. In our case, we have a half inch bolt, which means that a half inch screw, which means that we need a 3 eighths of an inch pre-drilled hole. So we need the drill first. And then to actually tighten the screw in, you're gonna need a drill, or an, uh, in our case, we have an impact driver with a socket that fits it. I believe this goes in the uh, three fourths of an inch, but we'll see. The first thing we need to do is we need to mark out where we're going to put the lag bolt. As you can see, we have it right here and it's two inches from the top and all these are 15 inches away from each other. Uh, actually, we're gonna do this one over here. Uh, don't worry about it. We're just going to change lo locations. So the first thing we need to do is drill the hole in. And we have the tape here just to stop us. So first, let's get right to it. Okay, so now we have the hole pre-drilled. The next step is to take our lag bolt. Make sure you have the washer on the bolt, I mean, the screw, <laughs> the screw before you put it on. Okay, I'm not sure if I said this correctly. Make sure you have the washer on the screw. I say screw on the bolt, okay. But anyway, make sure you have this on because you need to put this on when you're screwing in the, 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 the screw. Okay. I'd say, hold on. Just gonna do this by hand first. Okay. 
Okay. even drive it in a bit a bit more but this right now what we have here is okay this is good enough to support our deck as long as we put it 15 inches across the entire deck okay so that's how you put in a lag screw so first off you need to pre-drill a hole and that requires a, a 3 8 inch drill bit after that then you need to take the lag screw put the washer on and then you need to screw it in with a socket and an impact driver or another drill. That's a bit of a time consuming process and you need to do this repeatedly for every single screw that you do. Now, I'm gonna show you the alternative. I'm gonna show you how to screw in a structural screw. All right, so let's talk about structural screws now. So here is the box for a structural screw. This is from Ledger Lock. And it says right here that these structural screws can replace half an inch lag screws. So, okay, we have half inch lag screws right here. Let's replace them. So in the box, you find these screws. And, you know, like I described earlier, they're completely different. They don't even require a washer because this cap right here actually already acts as a washer. So a few things. This is a uh, 3 5 eighths of an inch deep. And it requires you to have this. Well, I don't, I guess it doesn't require you, but they give you this, uh, um, they give you the, uh, the driver bit to uh, screw this in. But they don't just come with hexagonal heads, they also come with other heads that have spider or torx uh, heads. Let me just put this in the light. In case you want to, if you, if you, in case you have a different fastener head. I mean, a, a different uh, bit. In our case, we have a hexagonal head with a hexagonal bit. So we're going to use that to screw it in. Now, screwing, screwing in a structural screw is pretty easy because as you'll notice at the tip of it, it's sharp, which means that it's self-driving, which means that you don't need to pre-drill a hole like we've done with that one. And this is the reason that we've actually moved to this hole because we're going to put our structural screw up here. And the reason that we're putting a structural screw up here is because we want the foam that we put later to be flush. And it can't be flush if there's a giant screw there. So we're gonna put these structural screws here. So first, we're going to line it up right here and screw it in. is installed. Look how easy that is compared to the lag screw. This one you had to pre-drill a hole, you had to put a washer on, and then you had to screw it in. But this one, you just align it, it goes right in. All right, let's do this again. Let's see how easy it is. All right, let's do it. Oh, there we go. takes about a minute to two minutes per screw. So uh, I think one of the things I saw online was like, you could probably do an entire job with just structural screws. And by the time that someone else finishes that job with black screws, you'll probably already be sipping uh, drinks for your break. <laughs> so who's the clear winner of this debate? I guess nowadays, structural screws are a bit more expensive than lag screws at the moment. And that's because they're a bit of a newer technology. But overall, these save much more time, and they're just as strong. So I'd say that the clear winner of this debate of lag screws versus structural screws has to be structural screws. Well, okay, so actually, my dad has informed me that actually the cost between the lag screw and the structural 
screw, they're not all that different right now. And actually, the structural screw might be cheaper. Right now, uh, they sell lag screws uh, and the washers individually for about $2 total. And they sell uh, structural screws. You can only get them in boxes. Oh, my bad. Structural screws in boxes of 50 or more. And each box of 50 costs $50. So that means $1 per screw compared to $2 per lag screw and washer. So at the moment, structural screws are actually cheaper. Uh, now keep in mind, uh, like we might not be factoring in like um, if you, if you buy lag screws in bulk, maybe they might be the same price. Or if you buy these individually, maybe they might also be two dollars per screw. But no matter what the uh, no matter what the cost is, at least right now their their prices seem to be pretty similar. So that means that we're only left to compare their convenience and their I guess their use. And in terms of convenience. Lag screws are way more uh, tedious to use than structural screws. So just to reiterate, the clear winner of this debate has to be structural screws. And also keep in mind, uh, to add insult to injury, for the lag screw, you need to use a impact driver with some sockets in order to screw it in. Whereas with the, uh, the structural screw, they actually give you the fit. So for a lag screw, you need an additional, probably like $50 worth of tools in order just to screw it in. So just, just to remind you, structural screws are better. All right, so that's it for this video. Sorry about the rambling. This, these vlogs are, they're mostly for like, like my friends, my family, and my, my family's friends, and the friends of my family's friends. But I guess they're also very important for educating people on like, or informing people on different thought processes, thought processes and tools that go into this kind of job. I do apologize about the lighting and the sound because you know it's raining right now. It's also really hot, but I think today we did a pretty good video. Just to remind you, today we talked about attaching our deck to a ledger beam or to a house using lag screws or structural screws. In our next video, we're going to be talking about the flush beam. And we're going to be using a different set or type of screws in order to fasten those together. So go check out that video and I'll see you there. But for now, I'm glad that I can share this info with you and also probably share this info with myself in the future when I inevitably forget it and I have to look back at my videos. So I'm Ayman and thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe and look at other videos on I and Ayman, especially the videos on converting our patio to a three season multi-purpose room. And for now, I'm Ayman and signing out.